everybody, it's Rob Verley from National Fire Radio. We're not in the studio and we're not in New Jersey. We're actually all the way across the country in Portland, Oregon at FireX Talk. Today, I'm going to be talking to everybody about bridging the culture and tradition of today's fire service, a year with National Fire Radio. What does this mean? Well, quite simply, we're going to kind of talk into the uh, secret recipe and the glue that kind of holds National Fire Radio together. So we're going to give you a behind the scenes perspective into what we think, at least, has made us so successful. So stick around. This is Rob. National Fire Radio at FireX Talk 2019. Everybody, thank you very much for coming. Um, what you saw there is the start of branding and engagement for National Fire Radio. We say our name. We say who we're from, what we're talking about or the subject matter that we're speaking about. And we finish it up with our name, who we're from, and where we're at. And that happens every time. My name's Rob Ridley. And I'm from National Fire Radio. I also serve as a lieutenant with the Fairview Fire District in Poughkeepsie, New York, and I'm a volunteer member of the Hyattsville Volunteer Fire Company down in uh, Prince George's County. If you're looking for a live-in program for young, inspiring firefighters, 6200 Bellcrest Road, check them out. They're a great group of guys and, and girls, and uh, totally get down there. So I'm also this uh, co-host and co-founder of this thing called National Fire Radio. And if you're asking yourself what National Fire Radio is, it's very simply put, it's a social media platform and podcast that talks about culture and tradition in the fire service. And we share the tips, tricks, and hacks that the fire service has to offer, whether they be from the senior firefighter to the senior officers, all the way down to the probationary firefighter who's coming in and has a great idea but doesn't have a platform to really stand on and get that idea um, out there. And the last thing is that kind of what we're known for. We're all apparatus nerds. We like looking at fire trucks. Like when this whole history of the National Fire Radio started, that was kind of what I was hoping for is we'd get to go into some uh, cool places and check some of these fire departments out. So really quickly, in December of 2017, I got a phone call from Jeremy Donch. Actually, he sent me a Facebook message because he didn't even have my phone number. And he said, hey, Rob, I've always wanted to be a career fireman. I never got the chance to do it. I had to run a family business. So I want to start a podcast in 2018 would you mind helping me out? I think you can balance me out. First off, if you've ever met Jeremy, that, that's an impossible task, but I was up to try something impossible. I told him that I had nothing going on, and if we gave it uh, you know, some hard work, we might get 1,000 likes and 1,000 followers, and that'd be pretty cool. Um, that was a lie. In 2018, I was getting married, so I had a lot going on, and then we didn't realize this would become the animal that it has become. Um, so why does it work? It seems to be a question all the time that people ask us is why National Fire Radio works. Uh, the first thing is we're where the attention is. And if we haven't figured it out yet, every firehouse, and at least it seems today, has this as a problem. All right? Not my dog Atlas, but the cell phone. All right? um, we are where the attention is. And the attention of today's younger firefighters is in social media. So we take our message and we put our message where the attention is. Instagram, Facebook, we're getting into Twitter a little bit, but Quite honestly, I don't want to get into Twitter because I don't want the president to name me in a tweet. Um, and, and we take our message on YouTube, everything else, we, we put our message out there. We're 100% authentic, all right? I say like 99% because if there's somebody who's got something that's really awesome and it's a good uh, tip, trick, or hack, we're going to share it and repost it. But the majority of our content is stuff that we come up with for our podcast. We go out and shoot it at the firehouses. We get invited out to the fire departments. I was downstairs on the floor earlier shooting content of apparatus. Um, we have people come into our studio space in Wanakew, New Jersey, and we interview them and we engage them. And that's really what is uh, one of the, the, the big parts that makes National Fire Radio so successful. On top of that, we're engaging. We engage everybody that's out there, and we focus on that engagement. And I think a lot of people miss the engagement. They're very quick to say, hey, these new generation of firefighters are whatever stereotype you want to throw out there. You can, there's, there's hundreds of them. But at the end of the day, National Fire Radio, our whole concept of what we want to do is engage firefighters and bring value back to the fire service in this culture and tradition that we're kind of losing. Everybody can think about somebody who's retired and how when they walk out that door, we lose all of their knowledge, all that culture and tradition that they've kind of built up in their years of experience and being in the firehouse, and it goes away. So one of the things with National Fire Radio that we can do is we can kind of interview those people and get those stories out there, 
and then engage people into those stories. It's the same thing when we do apparatus innovations. I was telling uh, Jim uh, this morning that you know we go out and do apparatus innovations and we'll find like a deck gun on the top of Roosevelt's fire engine that's actually been there and it's been passed down through three or four fire engines. It's off of one of the, I think it's one of their old Ford cab overs or their old international cab overs. And they pointed this out to us and the younger guys went, whoa, I didn't know that. And then without missing a beat, Jeremy jumps in and says, and now it's your responsibility to pass it on to the next generation. And it's all about that engagement. I'm take a look at my notes here so I don't get off to uh, content. We have to push content out. All right, content is king in this social media business. All right, and I say this like I'm I'm in charge of a business. I'm actually just uh, you know a half of a of a problem of National Fire Radio. This one person who's taking part in it. But if you're going to be out there in social media and you're going to be out there as a fire service leader in social media, you have to have content to put out. If we don't have the content to put out, we're going to miss the boat and we're going to be replaced tomorrow. And that's why that content should be original and engaging if it can be, all right? And it should be, we should all strive for that. I wanna talk about some uh, examples of engagement and what we've learned over the year with National Fire Radio. We have, we've had the opportunity to interview some great people and I think we've done some good things for the fire service and bring back that value. I think of a couple of stories in particular and where we've gotten feedback from, from our viewers and our followers. Um, the first one comes from a man named Jim Doggerty who's an ex-chief of Mawa in New Jersey. You're an ex-chief. If you're a past chief, that means you've passed away. So don't ever call anybody a past chief in New Jersey. They get very upset and they'll tell you, I'm not dead, I'm an ex-chief. All right, so Jim's in our studio, an ex-chief Doggerty. He's telling us a story about in uh, July of 1988, getting, um, hearing a fire go out and he's like, oh, I'm gonna go buff this fire. It's in Hackensack, New Jersey and it's gonna be an amazing experience for him. He's gonna go see this fire. All right, it ends up being the Hackensack Ford dealership fire. It's the last in the holy trinity of bowstring uh, trust collapses that have happened that have killed firefighters. And Jim goes from being a young firefighter who's buffing a fire to all of a sudden trying to rescue firefighters who are trapped in the building. And him and a firefighter from Hackensack, New Jersey are beating the heck out of a, a wall in the back to try to gain access to these guys who they believe are trapped in a tool room. And he talks about that rescue attempt and how when they got through that wall, there was a wall of fire and how that incident of the loss of five brothers motivated him to be an awesome chief, an awesome company officer, and more importantly, an awesome fire instructor. And then we got the feedback from his students who go, well, that makes sense why he's the way he is. The second half of that story comes from retired deputy chief Steve Kalman, who was hired in this horrible aftermath of that fire. All right, he started his probationary year after the Hackensack Ford dealership fire. But he takes it to the next level and says, our department changed. And they went through a whole transformation. And he moves up the ranks. And his advice to everybody from that incident and every incident onwards is that we used to have experience-based knowledge and, and, uh, and leadership from going to fires. And fires are now down. So now we have to have this training-based model. And he wants every person who's out there in the fire service to pick up a book, to go to classes, make the trip out to Portland and come to FireX Talk, tune into something on YouTube or social media that's out there and become engaged and become somebody who's going to learn about the fire service. And it was an awesome example. And lo and behold, a couple weeks later, we start realizing this phenomenon of getting messages back from people who are saying, wow, you know, I, I thought I was the, the black sheep of my firehouse for wanting to go out there and get training. I thought I was, the, I was doing something wrong. And it, it kind of starts to light up in our heads that maybe we're onto something a little bit bigger than what we're doing with National Fire, Fire Radio with this engagement. We had somebody like Joe Speranza come in who all of a sudden starts telling us a story because I pitch a question to him. I say, Joe, what's something that you can bring back to firefighters, like something that's you know just off the top of your head that you wouldn't think of? And he said, well, one of the things that I do is if I get to a scene of a bad auto accident, and we've all known when we have those bad scenes and somebody's not gonna make it and they're in their last moments, he's like, I reach in and I grab a hold of the person and I let them know that, hey, we're here. We are here for you and you are not alone. 
And I'm sitting in the studio and I'm like, whoa, I didn't know we were gonna get this heavy this quick because what a powerful impact of the statement that was. A couple of weeks later, we got a message from a young firefighter in a rural part of the country who tells his story about being at an auto accident scene and being completely helpless because he's got somebody in front of him, the rescue truck's minutes out, and he knows they're dying. And he keys into that episode from National Fire Radio and reaches in and says, we're here. You're not alone. Help's on the way. We are here. And how he relates his story of now, he wasn't helpless anymore. And that was an amazing feeling. We got somebody like Bobby Ecker on the show who gives firefighters, young firefighters, permission to be aggressive again. And he handles tactics and controversial issues and says, hey, if you do this and it's my family inside, I'm going to have a word with you outside afterwards. He has great catchphrases and says like things like, we're not delivering ice. We're out there to get in there and get after that fire and be aggressive. And it's great to see those messages come out because after Bobby was on our show, we get these folks that are out there and they're saying, yeah, I'm a young fireman in a firehouse and I want to be that aggressive firefighter. I want to be engaged. I want to be training. And I'm told to be quiet. Sit down. Sit in the back. Don't say anything. We'll do training when the time is. What kind of message does that send to the fire service? It's a horrible message. So at least with National Fire Radio, we know we're being a voice out there. And it's been an excellent year with us. We've done things with fire apparatus innovations that have been mind-blowing. We've gone to, uh, to, to different apparatus manufacturers. But what we've really gotten out of this is that through apparatus innovations, and we talked about it a little bit before, but we get into these firehouses with people and we start talking about their fire, fire trucks and how they're setting them up. And you can quickly pick up the culture and tradition that's in a firehouse. We go to Westfield, New Jersey, and I'm looking at a fire truck that stumps me because it's from 1996, but it looks brand new because the culture and tradition in that firehouse is to take care of the apparatus. It tells a story, all right? They took the siren off of the old ladder truck. I mean, this thing sounds different. It's not a cue. It's, it's great, but it's that part of that company pride. And we get to showcase that. And it's been an awesome experience in doing that. Last one was a, a man named Jared Van Eck came on our show. We talked about physical fitness. Clearly, I listened to a lot of what Jared had to say about physical fitness. But he talks about getting yourself in shape and doing it a little bit at a time. I don't know if we saved lives with National Fire Radio, but I know that we impacted three people who combined lost over like 360 pounds. One guy stopped smoking and started eating right. Another guy started eating right and working out and just doing a, a walk a day, you know, and, and built up from there. And then another guy didn't really take Jared's whole message to heart. He just went in full, full tilt, quit smoking cold turkey, started eating healthy, and started working out and lost over 120 pounds. It was awesome that we got that experience, but we did it because we were out there and engaging our, our people. In the end, or the beginning, whichever one we're at there, National Fire Radio is all about capturing that culture and tradition of the fire service. We get people to come into our studio, we have them sit down, and we talk to them. But there's a responsibility that comes along with it. We were pointed this out by Chief Thode from the city of Bridgeport Fire Department. And that's really one of the main points that I want to make to all of us today as fire service leaders. There's nobody out there who's really supervising us. There's nobody out there making sure the message is good, except for groups like this. And it's up to us to be out in front of this, uh, in front of this problem with social media. We talk about for them, and we've heard it over and over in this conference. We talk about how we're aggressive and we're going to be aggressive firefighters. If we want this message to get out there, we have to be on the forefront of this. And we have to be out there making sure our message is louder than those who are, I don't want to say they're saying the, the bad thing, but they're saying the bad thing, right? We know they are. If they're, if they're telling us if a department's out there and they're saying our first, first line off is not going to go inside the building and we're not going to put the victim first, that's a problem. And we need to be out there 
saying like, hey, that's not okay. That's, uh, that's kind of how I want to, I guess, maybe end this. Um, it's, been a, it's been a great year for National Fire Radio. And um, the one thing that we need to do especially is there's two people we have to thank who have been so supportive of us. Terry Donch and my wife Molly have been amazing in letting us do this. It's become a full-time job. It's taken us away from the family. So for the two of them, I want to thank them. Thank you. I hope I brought some kind of value out there to what it is we do here at National Fire Radio and explain what it is that we do. Thanks for having me.